everyone, Joanne from Art Resin here, and today I am joined by artist Daniel Anstead. Daniel, thank you so much for coming to work with us today. Thanks for having me. So Daniel is a collage artist. In fact, you can see some of his beautiful pieces behind us here. So Daniel, what will we be working on today? Uh, we're going to recreate this design here on a 12 by 12 using more of a beachy theme. Oh, that sounds fantastic. So I know that there um, are certain steps you need to take when you're resining over paper, so I'm really looking forward to learning all of your techniques. Yeah. So let's get started. Okay, Daniel, do you want to walk us through the materials that you brought with you today? Yeah, so we got your regular school glue stick. Mm -hmm. I got a pair of scissors. I got a ruler and a pencil so that we can uh, find the center of our board. An exacto knife for when we have to trim the edges. And then we got our paper, which I usually get from a coffee table book, so we won't have a problem when we're pouring resin over top of it. That's amazing. And it's really important to use good quality paper, right, when you're resining. Yeah. And my mind immediately would go to like a high end kind of magazine, but um, coffee table books, that's a fantastic idea. Yeah, you can use uh, Vogue or National Geographic, have good quality paper, or a magazine dedicated to photography. They're also good as well. Yeah, and I imagine they would be great for images as well and colors and stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's a great tip. Um, and if you do use a lower quality paper, what are some of the problems that you've come across? Uh, you're definitely going to get some bleed through. You're going to see what's on the other side of the paper, and uh, that's no good. Yeah, and the paper can also like absorb the resin too sometimes, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, awesome. And then we are also going to be working on a 12 by 12 panel that we painted white. So what is our first step? Our first step is going to find the middle of the board. So I'm just going to draw some diagonal lines corner to corner. And these also are going to give us nice guiding lines uh, while we're making the design so that once we reach these lines, we kind of know that that's the direction the paper is going to have to go in because it can get kind of wonky in between. So now what's your uh, next step to create your circular piece? Uh, so we're going to do the middle first and mm -hmm. normally I do a black or something really dark. I don't think that's going to work with our theme today. So instead I'm just going to look for the darkest color we have mm -hmm. and I think it's going to be one of these. Yeah, that looks best. So that's going to be the center? Yeah, that'll be our center and so we'll just start cutting these up. Okay. So does it matter like what size you cut your strips? Do they all need to be the same size as well? They don't have to be the same size. You don't want to get them too thin though. Uh, they'll be harder to maneuver. So when they're nice and thick, it's easier to get it in a circular pattern. Mm, okay. Uh, so we can just get our glue. You can either glue, put the glue onto the paper or onto the board for the first one here. Mm -hmm. It's just as easy oh, yeah, to right. get it right on the board. And you have a lot more control, don't you, with a glue stick rather than using like liquid school glue. It can be a little yeah. messy. And... and the great thing with using the resin is that you can use uh, these basically school glues because um, the resin is going to seal it nicely, but if you were just doing a collage without the resin, uh, school glues will break down so your paper will start to fall off. Oh, I see, right. So in that case, you'd have to use like a clear medium or something. Mm. So you find that this, this uh, glue stick holds better? Uh, when you're doing the resin, yeah. So Daniel, I'm watching you create this circle and it you're making it look so effortless, <laughs> but I know you're following a technique. Yeah, I'm just making sure that uh, I'm going corner to corner here. Uh, it'll give us a nice uniform circle. So you put your first piece down on your guideline and yeah. then you're going, meeting the corner on this first. Yeah, me meeting the corner here yeah. and here. And then down at the bottom as well. Yeah. Yeah, so you get a perfect like diagonal. The great mm -hmm. thing is, is that your last piece is going to cover up any mistakes that you've made. Mm. And you were saying the glue stick is really great too because it will allow you to kind of slide it. Yeah, you can yeah. slide it around and there's not going to be too much residue on there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, look at that. Amazing. So then we can move on to our next color. Okay. So the first circle is complete? Yes, first oh, wow. circle is complete. Okay. So you just pick whatever one you want next and cut it again. And do you follow like um, a pattern in terms of like color? Do you like for your next circle? Um, well, I will try to keep an order of what image I'm using, but as you go, you might find that things look better beside each other. Mm -hmm. So I don't stick to it. 
if I don't have to. Do you ever use photographs? I have used photographs before, and those work really well because also they're nice and thick. Mm -hmm. So the resin's not gonna do anything to them. So I'm just gonna start on our guiding line. And you're gonna overlap from the first circle mm -hmm. a little bit. Okay. And then you're going corner to corner, right? Or... Well, you're kind of going center oh, okay. of the bottom and yeah. then the corner of the top. Okay. Oh yes, gotcha. Yeah. So you met, met the center down here on the first piece and then the corner up at the top. Yeah. And so you're going with a darker and then a lighter color. Yeah, that's, I like the contrast in doing that. And when I'm gluing these down, I kind of like to mix up the orientation of them so mm -hmm. that it's not, I want it to be a little bit abstract. I don't like it to just look like one image going around, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I usually don't do the same image all the way around. So I'll probably do like a third and then switch the image. So where do you source your um, your coffee table books from? Uh, like from secondhand stores? Secondhand or? stores, um, the bargain section of big bookstores, mm -hmm. and there's also some great discount uh, stores online. Mm -hmm. So today we're working with a beach theme. Like, do you find that you often have a theme for your work, or is it you gravitate more towards like colors? Or uh, I definitely try to stick with a theme. Uh, it's usually something a little more abstract than doing like a beach theme. Mm -hmm. I usually start with a word like passion or spirit, and then try to find images and colors that I associate with that word. Oh, that's great. And so we've done about a third, so I'm going to switch to a new image. I kind of just look to see what will look good. We've been doing beach, so let's go back to some water. So what would your word be for this? Good question. Um, maybe coastline. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm gonna switch the color up because we've done another third. I'm gonna just look for something that's a little different so it's not all the same. And I kind of like these waves coming in, mm -hmm. add some white. Mm -hmm. Do you normally kind of break it up into thirds? For the first uh, circle around, yeah, I usually mm -hmm. do thirds. So you just want to make sure that uh, you're covering all your spaces and that everything's closed up and it's perfectly fine if you need to overlap anything. It looks fantastic. I love it. So now we're ready for the next row. Yeah. So I think we're going to bring back in the uh, color from the center. So if you did um, three on the first row, do you think you might do like four different colors maybe on this next one? Uh, we'll probably do four colors. Uh, it's not formula that I kind of stick to. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of just uh, whatever image you're using. These um, images are pretty long, so we should be good with four. I was going to ask you, so that sometimes can be an issue with um, collage art, that you've got lots of opportunity for air to get trapped, which can off-gas or release as bubbles in your resin. So do you have any kind of um, safeguards that you use to prevent that? Well, I do. Uh, after I'm done, I seal it with um, a clear acrylic medium. Mm -hmm. But also, I will check in on it maybe every half hour just to make sure nothing's mysteriously popped up. Yeah. But you're doing a really great job gluing as well, which is also really important because like your strip is really well bonded to the to the panel yeah. and to the paper. Make sure there's no air bubbles mm -hmm. trapped underneath. Yeah. 
So on the piece that we're working on now and the piece that you have on the table there, you're working in like with two inch strips. Do you ever work with longer strips or with strips that maybe, maybe are cut into like triangles or? Uh, I've never done triangles before. I have done uh, longer strips about, I think there were three inches uh, for a bigger piece. Mm -hmm. But I generally stick with the 12 by 12s or the 8 by 8s and I find that two inches is a good size for that. Mm -hmm. Wow, Daniel, this is amazing. First of all, I am so impressed with how perfect your circle is. <laughs> You're working with your guidelines. I can see how helpful that is. And then like the colors are so amazing to stand back and look and they harmonize so beautifully. But then if you look up close, like these are all, um, you know, beach chairs and towels and there's some people swimming here. It's so amazing. Yeah, that's one of my favorite things about creating these pieces that from afar, they just look like a geometric abstract, mm -hmm. but then people can get up close and see the little details that are hidden in there. Yeah, so much interest. So what's next? What's our next step? Next step is we're going to just keep uh, doing the same thing for another layer. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to go into our next color palette. So I'm going to use this blue again, but I'm going to make sure that I uh, place it on another side. I don't mm -hmm. want to keep going on the blue on the same spot. Mm -hmm. So I might start over here. Daniel, it looks amazing. Again, I'm so incredibly impressed at how perfect your circle is. And I love how you balanced out your colors. It looks amazing. Thanks. So I guess all that's left to do now is just um, these corners, right? Yeah, so for the corners, we're really going to pay attention to what colors we use. Uh, so down here, we have lots of the browner sand. So we're going to put that in this back corner here. And on this side, there's lots of the waves. So we're going to put that one opposite. And again, beach goers opposite mm -hmm. of where they've been. And then last, we have the blue. Yeah, perfectly balanced out. It looks great. So are you going to cut the same sort of strips again? Yeah, same strips and I'm going to glue them down in the same way. Great. So the one thing that is a little different about doing corners is that I'm not going to go clockwise. I'm going to actually start in the middle and then move out to either side. Mm, okay. And you're overlapping like ever so slightly? Yeah. Great, so the panel is completely covered. Looks fantastic, but I'm assuming we're gonna trim the edges, right? Yes, this guy needs a little bit of a haircut, <laughs> so we're gonna use our X-Acto knife and just uh, run along the edge and then trim everything off. Okay, perfect. Well, so you're doing it that way. I assume that you would flip it. Uh, no, I like going this way, and you just kind of downward motions mm -hmm. so that you're not lifting too much off. Oh, that works amazing. And you're going really slowly, too. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so I can see you've got your thumb against the blade and you're guiding it yeah. along the side of the panel. Just keeping yeah. it flush mm -hmm. with the side. So after you're done uh, cutting the edges, if you notice that any pieces are lifting away because uh, maybe they didn't get enough glue the first time, uh, just put a little bit of a glob on a loose uh, piece of paper and slide it underneath and just uh, glue the underside of that and push it down. All right, uh, that's done and we're ready for the next step. Great, so what are we gonna do next? Uh, we're gonna put on a clear gloss medium. It's gonna help the paper uh, stay down and not float when we put on the resin. And it'll also seal it so that it doesn't become waterlogged. Okay, so it's gonna help prevent any edges from curling up or anything like that. Exactly. Yeah, okay, good. So I like using a roller because it gives me a nice thin layer. Have you ever used um, a spray sealant? I have used a spray sealant before when, uh, one time when I did it with uh, photographs, mm -hmm. like actual photographs, 
and I found that the spray sealant kind of melted the colors off the photographs. But I've never tried it on coffee table book paper, mm -hmm. so that might actually be a great idea. Kind of, I think it would be better coverage as well. But I love that this kind of acts almost like a brayer as well, mm -hmm. too, right? The, uh, the roller. Yeah. So it's really helping to like make sure everything is bonded. Oh, yeah. Great. And another really good reason for um, sealing, especially when you're working with paper and resin, is because you have layered paper, there's lots of opportunity for trapped air to, uh, to get caught in there, which is going to release as bubbles in your resin, right? Absolutely. So sealing it is going to help mitigate that as well. So you've coated the whole piece, and um, how long is it going to take to dry now before we can resin? Should just take a couple of minutes. Oh, perfect. In the meantime, we can measure and mix. Exactly. Okay. All right, so we have taped off the sides of our piece, right, because Daniel's going to apply the resin just to the top. So we've taped off the sides, and we've mounted it up on these plastic cups so it doesn't stick to the work surface. Um, we're going to check to make sure it is horizontal. It's perfect. Mm -hmm. Good job. And now it's time to measure and mix. All right. So I went to the uh, Art Resin Calculator. It's at artresin.com slash calculator, punched in 12 by 12, and it let me know that we need five ounces total of resin and hardener combined. And it's a little bit cold here today, so we gave our bottles uh, a warm water bath just to help minimize any bubbles. Doesn't matter if you measure your resin or your hardener first, as long as it's a one-to-one -one ratio. And then we're going to mix for three minutes, scraping the sides and scraping the bottom. All right, and the uh, sealant is nice and dry now, so here comes the fun part. <laughs> that really makes the color pop, doesn't it? It's oh, amazing yeah. to see. Yeah, all those teals, the turquoises are just like coming to life now. What do you find it does for your collage work, the resin coating? Uh, well, it makes the colors pop, and it just gives it like a cool look that I don't think you can get with anything else. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Amazing. So we've done our dust check, picked out any little bits of dust, and it looks absolutely perfect. You did a flawless pour. Thank you. Good and, job. Uh, now we'll cover it to make sure no more dust gets in there and at my house to make sure no animal hair gets in. Yep. And we're going to let this uh, cure for 24 hours and we'll be back tomorrow. So we're back and now this is my favorite part, revealing <laughs> the piece. Do you want to do the honors? Yeah. Ah, it looks so good, Daniel. I love it. What do you think? Yeah, it turned out really well. Uh, as you can see, sometimes the resin will get along the edges, but I love the effect it creates. Yeah, it kind of makes like sort of a ray effect. It's, it really adds to the whole geometric feel of the piece. Absolutely, yeah. and I love how my favorite part of my creating these is that on the wall, standing back, it looks different. And then I think the lines invite people to come up and see what the individual pieces are. There's so much to see in here. And again, like I absolutely love your color palette. I love it. Amazing job and a flawless pour. Like I said yesterday, it's absolutely perfect. Should we take the tape off? Yes, yeah. This actually is a perfect time. It's been about 18 hours since we poured. Um, so the resin is dry to the touch and you could hang it on the wall right now if you wanted to. Absolutely. Um, and it's a perfect time to take the, the tape off because the resin hasn't fully cured. That would be at the 72 hour mark. So Daniel, if you wanted to like ship that out to um, a client, then you'd want to wait the full 72 hours. Oh yeah and it'll be rock hard. And you can see it really helps to have a good quality masking tape. Oh yeah. When you use lesser quality tape um, and you're peeling, it just rips like crazy. So this is, there's a couple spots where it's sticking, but it's, it's actually really, really good. You can just use a blade and X-Acto knife to get off any little bits that might still be stuck on. And there it is. It is amazing. I absolutely love how it turned out. Your colors and the pattern, it looks fantastic. We loved having you here and teaching us, so thanks so much for coming in. My pleasure. So if you have any questions for Daniel, please leave them in the comments below. Don't forget to hit subscribe, and we will see you next time. Bye. Bye.